Hello again. Greetings to everyone. Welcome to our sixth session of Bexel Manager Online Education. I'm Mila Tapejovic, B Manager at Bexel Consulting, and again, I'm with you showing how to use Bexel Manager. For the questions, as usual, use Q&A or the chat, so after the session, I'll try to respond. In the meantime, you're seeing some of the 4D simulation and 5D simulation done in Bexel Manager scheduling module. And today we're just starting to explain the basics of scheduling options of Bexel Manager. And then next week, we're going to skip to more advanced scheduling option using entirely methodologies and zones which you are defining in Bexel Manager to create the schedule entirely. Yesterday, before we start today, yesterday we released a new update for Bexel Manager available in German, Spanish, French and Russian language and very soon we're releasing the Italian version as well. And today we published a new educational material in form of a handbook, which is more comprehensive version of educational material containing graphical description and examples of workflows for different modules. Let me just show you briefly how it's gonna look like. For different modules of Excel Manager and also we're publishing updated version of, of our original manual uh, as well very soon. So this is a handbook and uh, I think starting from today uh, you'll be able to download this from the user area and also we're publishing a lot of additional materials that you can download from the same from the same uh, user area uh, including some of the cost databases or cost classifications and some scripts probably for the Bexel Manager. So this is the handbook available from today. And yesterday we talked about cost management and how to use Bexel Manager cost features and uh, how to estimate the cost of your project. And this was just an intro to the following topics leading us to the scheduling and 5D construction simulations. So since the entire construction industry basically is still in transition period, switching from the traditional into digitalized BIM workflows, our company understands that there is still a lot of companies struggling with this transition and uh, trying to improve and utilize their common workflows into the new ones, into the BIM. And uh, therefore, today I'll show you the basic scheduling options and how to create for the construction simulation using the schedule generated in some traditional scheduling tools such as uh, Primavera or MS Project and how to import these schedules into Bexel Manager uh, in order to link B model elements to the tasks from your schedules and to create your 4D and later on also 5D simulations. But I have to point out that Bexel Manager itself is a scheduling tool, very advanced scheduling tool, and it allows you to fully and almost automatically create feasible and optimized schedule uh, which which are automatically linked to your B model, and the, the tools and the module for doing that in Bexel Manager are uh, scheduling options for the zones and methodology, and also the ske uh, schedule editor in the lower part of the screen. And the next week we're gonna explain in advance how you can create your schedules totally using the Bexel Manager. But today, for all of you still switching from traditional into, into BIM processes, I'll explain process of linking. And 
this workflow is not really the best or most efficient way of creating schedule because you you actually creating your tasks and uh, estimating duration and your resources in some other uh, scheduling tools and then you link all these tasks in the B model but actually your model already have a lot of information uh, regarding the quantities and if you used and the cost editor and cost estimation which we explained uh, yesterday you can automatically um, let's say um, anticipate the resources which are which are required for specific activities so even though you're not using all the information when you import the schedule from some other scheduling tools i'll show you some basics and uh, some scheduling options of the bexel manager how to link how to import the schedule and then uh, of course next time we'll show you the advanced scheduling engine how to fully create and optimize the schedule totally in bexel manager and how to uh, how to export these into the uh, reports or for the and 5d videos but more about that advanced scheduling option next week today i'm gonna skip right into the scheduling tools some other scheduling tools such as in this case primavera and you have some or actually i'm presenting you quite simplistic schedule for uh, structural works of one simple building and then using the export button for uh, Primavera, we actually exported this into the uh, X XML files. And I'm not gonna waste more time to doing that. Actually, I'm just gonna present you this same schedule, which is exported into XML file. Well, basically, when you export uh, Primavera files, you're going to get the uh, RAR or actually zip file containing that XML file. So when you extract it, this is the schedule. And I'm going to import the schedule in the Bexel Manager. So if you want to use Bexel scheduling uh, option and the schedule editor, the tool for that is in the lower part of your screen, schedule editor and it has some options for working with the schedules in order to import or to create the schedules from the scratch of course you have to use new schedule option to create your schedule so this one will be new imported p6 okay and of course we have a different views of the schedule the most common used is the gantt chart and usually when you're creating your schedules you're working with a gantt chart but also bexel manager allows you to use and see your schedule in the logical view and also in the line of balance so when you start populating and creating the schedule all the information will be available in other types of view I'm going to present that as well. So this is the basic and simple way of creating the schedule. And of course, you have almost all or even more features than standard scheduling options, such as uh, the options for settings the calendar for your schedule. <clears throat> so you can define your calendars. You can specify the exceptions. You can provide some non-working days or the holidays you can create multiple multiple versions of the calendars so you can assign specific calendar to uh, let's say some subcontractor and other calendar for the other subcontractors so it's not limited just to one you can use multiple calendars you can create different settings or adjust different settings regarding when your schedule is supposed to start um, what are the typical durations so whenever you create new task in the bexel manager if you do it doing it manually uh trying to rep reproduce your workflow using the uh, some other scheduling tool you can do that but 
I have to repeat next time, next week, I'm going to show you some more advanced scheduling options for automatic creation of the tasks using the methodology and the zones. But if you want to create it manually, then you have to, in either case, to create your default task duration. And of course, at any point of time, you can adjust it. Of course, you have some animation options, and these are related to uh, for the simulation itself. I'm going to explain it a little bit later. And also colors, uh, which we used, which will be used to colorize your elements during the, uh, for the simulations. <clears throat> so these are some uh, basic options. Of course, you can pop out entire view so you can see entire schedule uh, on your on your screen and all uh, options regarding to the tasks will be available in the lower part when you when you pop out in the window so one of the most simple ways how to create your task is just right clicking here in your already created uh, schedule this is the schedule name and then creating new tasks so if you want to reproduce your standard common workflow without linking your schedule uh, and tasks with the 3D elements, you can use the blank and then your tasks will be created. New task. And of course, it's not related to anything. It has some default duration. It's 40 working hours because we specified in the settings that that's default duration for each task. Of course, we can add additional columns here. So I'm going to find daily. Duration in the days, of course. So you can do that. You can change duration, of course, right here. And of course, it's automatically adjusted. We can duplicate these tasks. Uh, we can create new ones. Uh, and of course, this is really, really simplistic way. And this is something that is not common workflow, but I, anyway, I want to show you these, these options to create different tasks. And of course, when you're creating your tasks, they're not linked. So of course, you can use the other options to link these tasks each other with each other using the uh, options for the task editing on right click using the task editor or this option right here, task editor in the, in the upper part of this window. You're going to get the same window with the same options. And of course, I'm not going to deeply e e explain all these tabs right now, because some of these explanation you already have in the manual and in some of the online tutorials, the, base, the basic topic of today's uh, session is how to link uh, exported schedule from some other uh, uh, scheduling tool into the Bexel manager and how to uh, export it back and how to edit these schedules. So these are some options for each task. Right here, you can specify pre-successor and successor. And if we do that, we can specify the pre-successor for this new task. We can choose it, hit OK, and we can specify the type of relation. And of course, we can specify the legs between, if it's needed, legs between different uh, tasks. Of course, if you link your B model task uh, or actually schedule task with a B model elements, you can do it here using the rules option. So right here we can rule, uh, create the rules for linking these tasks to specific selection sets or the elements of the buildings. So this is the similar way how we can create the um, smart selection sets or uh, groups of the elements which we already used and created in this sample model, we can reuse it and link the task to the families, categories, or the selection sets. So this is the way how to link your B model elements, one of the ways. Of course, if you have your cost estimation, you can 
uh, from the Bexel manager, you can link it to the schedule. You, you also, when you link your um, elements with the tasks, you're gonna get your quantities from the related elements. You also have the uh, resources if you link your schedule or the tasks with the, with the cost version. And also you, you, you're able to see all the activities related to that tasks, all the properties. And of course, if you're importing the schedule from some other scheduling tool, you'll be able to see all the properties coming from that authoring or scheduling tool right here. And also we have a documents. If you link some documents in the Bexel manager with the, with the elements or the tasks, they're gonna be uh, available here. And also the settings for the presenting on how or how the task, the specific task will be presented in the animation. So these are some, let's say more advanced options for presenting your tasks in the animation. And of course, I'm not gonna save uh, any relation here. So this is one way how you can uh, change duration and the options for each task. But also if you go to the different view of your schedule, for example, the logical view, you can use it and change your relations between the activities right, right here because it's much easier. So right here, I can just drag and drop or actually connect the small circles and automatically I'm creating relation be between these two tasks. And in the lower part of the screen, I can change the uh, type of this relation. Simple as that. And if we do apply, of course, each type has different color of the arrow. So this is another way how you can recognize the types of relation red one is start to finish and actually finish to start, if we change it to finish to start, then the color is orange and all different types have different colors. So if we just switch into the Gantt chart, you see automatically these two tasks have the relation. Everything is related. So whatever you do in the Gantt chart is uh, applied in the, in the logical view. And of course, in the line of balance, when we uh, create additional levels of the schedule is gonna be much, much more understandable. So this is really, really simple way how you can create your schedule tasks. And this is not common workflow. So what you usually do and what are, uh, what currently a lot of users doing is actually importing the schedule from somewhere else. So for that purposes, I'm gonna delete these two created tasks using the option delete. Now we have uh, also again, just the original schedule. I'm gonna pop in the window so you'll be able to see the, the 3D model itself. And now I'm gonna use the option import from Primavera in this case, and use the same schedule which we exported from uh, Oracle Primavera. When you open it, the system actually shows you the window for the importing. This is the name of your file and this is the schedule. So we can just choose the schedule. On the next option, the system asks which activities and the tasks is gonna be created. We're gonna choose to import the calendars or all the settings for the calendars which are created in the originally uh, used the scheduling tool. We're gonna accept and import these and also if we if we want to import additional properties which are created in the scheduling tool we can go to the settings and choose which settings or the properties we want to import so by default everything is uh, selected i'm gonna just go to the finish and the system imports the schedule if we scale it to fit you'll be able to see entire schedule of course, using the uh, control button on your keyboards and scroll mouse, uh, scroll uh, button on your mouse, you can zoom in and out in your uh, gun chart. And of course, just by using the left mouse button, you can 
go, uh, let's say, left and right in this timeline by using the scale to fit. Everything is presented and and if we choose expand all from the options we're gonna see all the tasks from the schedule imported from Primavera. If I go back and bring you back the, the window of Primavera you'll be able to see that all these tasks are the same. Start finish date is the same. Durations cost uh, is zero for this project but relations are the same task name relations everything is the same and it's created in the original project uh, as of s as i've already said all relation and relation types are preserved and here you can see them presented in a different colors if you choose show and hide relations you can hide and see relations these are colorized in a different colors depending on type and if we choose show critical path all the tasks will be colored in red otherwise it's if it's disabled everything is blue and this is the the, the way how you actually importing the schedule from any scheduling tool in this column I'm currently showing you the, the column which represent the number of the elements from the B model which are linked or related to the imported schedule and currently as you see and this column shows you that none of the elements is related to the tasks because we still didn't link it and now we're coming to that part where I'm gonna show you how to link the tasks from the imported schedule to B model elements and usually this is a time consuming process and uh, it's not most most efficient way of uh, creating the schedule beam schedule at all but anyway a lot of customers are struggling with this and also um, usually this is um, or actually the, the, the way where we need this kind of linking all these specific tasks with each elements or each group representing specific task is usually when we're talking about infrastructure project where uh, design teams are using some non-standardized um, tools for BIM design which are not fully BIM authoring tools then they creating some kind of generic models and uh, in order to segregate these generic models because these are the same types they providing different names for generic types and using the names for these generic models they linking specific name of generic type to specific task of the schedule and in that in that case it's it's normal or it's usual uh, workflow that you have a lot of selection sets or the families or the types which have to be linked with each task uh, which is actually uh, by name uh, can be can be um, easily recognized and uh, re linked with the respective element or the or the group. But in this case, for presentation purposes, in order to simulate the same process, I've created a lot of selection sets or the groups of the elements, and each selection set or the group is supposed to be linked to one task. And as I've said, this is something that uh, that the users who are importing schedule from somewhere else doing in order to link the schedule to the to the elements of the B model. So they creating each group or uh, selection set for each task one by one. And this is what we uh, did here in order to simulate this process. 
and I also have to repeat once again this is not the, the common workflow there's a more easier way but in order to to show you this way you can create or here you can see selection sets which are actually supposed to be linked to the tasks and we have each selection set which representing or supposed to be linked to just one selection set um, beams on the first floor uh, slabs on the first floor beams on the second floor beams on the third floor and so on for each task uh, on different levels of hierarchy of the of the schedule and now in order to link these we're gonna go to the rules option rule and within this window you'll see your schedule so this window represents you the schedule if I expand it entirely you'll be able so to see all the leaf tasks and of course the parent tasks and this is if we choose to see the tasks according to the task segregation again we can choose it and change the type of presentation of the schedule regarding on the levels of hierarchy of the schedule so here you see the hierarchy the first um, in the hierarchy are the um, levels or the types of the building the next one is levels or the stories of the buildings and the level 3 are the tasks or the tasks name again I can go back to see the tasks as I've seen, seen them in the uh, gun chart and here we can link these tasks with bmodel elements in this case I'm just gonna select some of the structural elements right click on it and select link rules and then I can find specific selection set or elements of the bmodel this window actually allows you to link anything from this kind of different types of segregations of the B model element which is automatically uh, segregated and I've explained this when I explained uh, building explorer and the custom breakdowns on the first sessions so this is a system based segregation based on the buildings stories categories and the types of your B model elements and of course we have selection sets uh, which we created uh, again when we're talking about infrastructure projects when they use generic models they usually using generic models and the type uh, or the names for these generic models in this specific case which I'm currently presenting we're gonna select and link selection sets to respective tasks of the schedule so we can just select and that's it now you see that this task is related or linked to a selection set bearing walls cast in place and that's it so we can do this uh, several times repeat the same process for each task but this is really time consuming and that's why we presented another helpful tool which can help you to improve this process and make it faster so I, we can select all the tasks from from the schedule and in this case use the option map from the link rules and if your selection sets or the families having the same name as your tasks from the ported schedule you can use this option and the system will automatically try to map it according to respective names so in this case we can choose or select all the selection sets from the level 1 of structural works hit OK and the system automatically recognize their name and uh, match them or actually link task and selection sets according to the name and it's really really uh, much faster and easier way and we can repeat it for all other leaves or leaf tasks from the from the ported schedule I'm gonna repeat it to the level 2 if we have the same names we can do it automatically in this case the beams we don't have the selection sets for the beams so I'm gonna ignore it currently as it is and we're gonna go to the uh, third level 
I'm gonna again select all selection sets, hit OK. And that's it, we can do this for all these um, cell, uh, tasks. For the roofs, hit OK. For the ground slab, map or use uh, linking because it's just one selection set so we don't have to uh, use uh, additional help. The same goes to the foundations. It's the same because it's as I've said only one task. We can use the map again, choose foundations, hit OK and that's it. And I can do this for just a part of this external facade elements. We don't have to waste so much time on this. You, I think you understand the process. So it's really, really helpful to match it according to the name. And I'm going to expand this for the curtain walls. And as you see, we see we don't link all the, the tasks with the, with the selection sets because the name is not the same so I can manually do it or we can change the name of selection set or change the name in the tasks and then we can do the uh, automatic mapping again so you also have these options as well so now I'm gonna hit OK and in order to, to tell the system to execute all these uh, link relations we have to use the option update hit update and the system will automatically try to apply all these rules and now even though we applied it you still see the element count or the number of the elements which are related to a respective task is still zero but if I go to the task edit and see relations or actually rules you see it's linked so even though the task is related to selection set but the number of the element is still zero so what's the problem and this is a common problem and this is where our users usually um, have some struggling because they they usually link leaf tasks and they expect that everything is working and they can see uh, the, the, the simulation but in order to do it you have to uh, link also the parent tasks and because we saw that this is a common issue with our users we created a new uh, feature or the new tool which can help you to automatically uh, distribute all these leaf tasks um, and leaf uh, selection sets related to the tasks to all the parents. So in order to do that, uh, to link it to the parents and distribute it to parents, I'm just going to select the main schedule or the top parent task, use the option link rule and use distribute to parent tasks. So the system automatically redistributes all these leaf elements and leaf tasks to the parent and then to the its parent tasks and so on to the top. And if we hit OK now, do the update again, the system shows you that the tasks will be creating new relations with, uh, with the respective elements. And now when we update it again, you see the elements are linked or related to the tasks. All the structure, only these facades are not related because currently we didn't have that much time to uh, fulfill and link all the tasks. So this is it and this is the way how to link your tasks with the elements. If you want to see it, to see your animation, then you go to the schedule animation hit update animation and then we'll be able to play it but in order to make it to make it visible make sure that all elements in the B model are visible and also some of the common questions that we uh, receive from the from the users if we hit play we don't steal the the simulations uh, yet because you have to use the schedule view schedule view is dedicated for the schedule 
and then if we hit play and your elements are visible and everything is linked of course then within the schedule animation when we hit play everything is visible and the system presenting you the 4D simulation and this is how the current simulation looks like of course we have a lot of different options and this is really really simple simulation and one of the options additional options are related to the legends which are visible on your screen and all these options are really basic and uh, we cover them in YouTube tutorials so not I'm not gonna repeat the explanation right here again but this is the place where you can change these settings and of course we can create new video and animation not just to see the statical video presenting the tasks we can create new animation similarly as we created common animations uh, in the previous sessions and when we set it to active we can create or set the camera position at the start and then at specific time of uh, the schedule we can create new keyframe and that's it for for this presentation if we play it then the camera is actually moving around the building while it's executing and all these simulations can be exported into the videos or sets of images and of course we have a lot of different options for each of these um, different settings but I'm gonna explain it a little bit later and basically this is the way how you link your B model elements with the uh, imported schedule and how to create schedule or 4D simulation from the imported schedule if uh, this is clear um, I'm gonna skip to next uh, part of presentation or the next sample where I'm gonna demonstrate importing the schedule from uh, MS project for example because this was just a simple B model presenting you just uh, uh, several tasks or maybe 50 tasks from the schedule now I'm gonna import a little bit advanced schedule and show you how how to link it and then edit the uh, tasks of imported schedule and how to export it back and uh, of course uh, change it in the originally used scheduling tool and of course I have to repeat once again this process of uh, linking is not something that we promote because the Bexel manager itself is very advanced scheduling tool and it has a uh, advanced intelligence scheduling engine which is the topic for the next week but anyway uh, this today's session is for presenting you these time consuming but anyway uh, required from the, from the multiple users a process of importing schedule and that's it now I'm gonna use B model for advanced schedule so I'm gonna use this one which we used from the scratch starting these sessions uh, three weeks ago this is the same B model that we used from the start and this is where we stopped yesterday and of course we don't have any schedule created already so I'm gonna use and create new and of course every time when you're creating new schedule the system will ask you do you want to link your schedule with uh, existing cost version in this case we're not going to use anything we're just going to select none because we are importing the schedule from other scheduling uh, software so i'm going to use none and import the schedule from ms project i'm going to show you briefly the schedule in MS project and this is let's say more advanced schedule created in the MS project it has two buildings 
it has a lot of different tasks with uh, specific relations. You see almost 800 tasks. And this kind of linking B model with the task could be really, really time consuming for the, the, for the schedule of this size. And of course, we even used the schedules with uh, several thousands of the tasks, but I'm gonna show you some advanced options to link the schedule and the tasks with the 3db model elements in this case. So we're gonna use exported schedule from this one. And this is the XML file. So again, we can choose to select only the schedule without saving the name of the file. With the settings, everything is checked. We're gonna accept new calendar, click finish, and new schedule will be imported. So of course, within the total cost, we see zero because the total cost is related to the uh, cost version in the Bexel Manager. If you want to use the costs and the properties with the, uh, coming from the scheduling options, coming from the scheduling tool, we can create and link or present that column as well. So let me just find the column cost estimation and you see uh, blue colored properties and these are the properties coming from the uh, different scheduling tool in this case uh, MS project so I'm going to select the cost estimation and, and if we expand all then we're going to see the price for the lift tasks and of course we can compare the start and the finish dates you see these are the same And also all relations are the same. Let me just show you this. And of course, if we switch to the logical view, we'll be able to see relations between these tasks. And of course you can change these relations right here. If you do it, it's automatically will be applied in the gun chart. And then when we relate and link these tasks to the elements from the B model, we'll be able to see the actual line of balance to the uh, different levels. So now I'm gonna go back to the gun chart. All other options for the editing uh, schedules and the tasks are also available. So I can easily change duration for each of these tasks. I can switch it to, let's say, 50 working hours. And it's changed automatically. I can change duration in this way manually. And if we do this, the uh, related tasks will be automatically switched and moved depending on the uh, editings that we've done. So I'm doing this manually and everything is automatically changing. And of course, the way how you can compare different uh, schedules is by duplicating the schedule and then changing something. So you can always bring back the original one. So this one is edited, so we can even do the edit. So we can compare it with the previously uh, created version as well. Uh, so this is the way how you can actually see your schedules, edit these schedules right here, but how to link these, a lot of these tasks with the BIM model elements. So this is the way if you want to use advanced linking options in the Bexel manager. So instead of creating uh, all these selection sets for each task of your uh, schedule. Instead of that, you can just create the tasks or actually groups of the elements which are related to entire task, whether this task is executed 
in the second, first floor, or the uh, phase one, two, or three of your BIM model. So you know that we have the columns. And this task, task is actually is repeating in different uh, levels and different phases of the BIM model. And instead of creating specific selection sets for each of these, we can just create, and of course, this one is created and based on uniformed codes, and we can create selection sets which are capturing entire columns, for example. So let me just show you this. If we have the columns cast in place, and this task is repeating on different uh, levels and different phases several times, then instead of creating specific selection set for each of these, we can just create one selection set collecting all the columns which are supposed to be related to all these activities. So we're just creating selection set grouping all columns related to that specific activity, which is repeating on several uh, levels and several phases. And then we can do that for each of these specific tasks. So we can collect all the pile caps, all the great beams, basically all groups of elements which are repeating tasks throughout specific uh, stories or the phases. And if we do that, if you created that kind of selection sets, then you can use advanced Bexel Manager uh, engine for automatical linking of your selection sets or actually B model elements to respective tasks. And this system actually works from the top to the lowest level of your hierarchy. So you can automatically link your high level groups of B model elements and the system will segregate them and automatically filter these to each leaf task. So usually, for example, these imported schedules are segregated into different hierarchy levels. In this case, of course, based on the building stories and Bexel Manager have automatically segregated elements based on the stories. We presented that in the previous sessions. So you have automatically segregation based on the stories and the buildings. And you can use this kind of already created segregation of the elements to link, to link them with the hierarchy levels of your schedule. To link it to specific B model, to, to the story of the schedule. And of course, the next hierarchy level is in this case phases, so we can in this case create different phases or the zones and these are also high level groups. So we are collecting all elements from the project which are in the phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and the system will automatically segregate these elements for each respective uh, level of hierarchy until to the lowest leaf. So this is the, the main power of the Bexel Manager. So in order to use this kind of linking, we can, instead of using rules, we're going to use link, edit link rules. And then the window which pops up is actually a little bit more understandable. On the left side, you can see the segregation of your schedule. And on the right part, you see the segregation of your B-model elements based on the already explained types of segregation, buildings, uh, building stories, uh, B-model elements, families, and so on. It's automatically segregated. And you can use this kind of segregation to link it to the different hierarchy levels of your imported schedule. You can do it in a several ways. One of the ways is by drag and dropping the selection sets or the types of the elements from the right part and link it to the tasks on the left side. So this is, uh, let's say, one of the 
slowest ways but let me just explain this one as well so we can find some task or selection set on the right side of the window for example uh, pile caps in this case and link pile caps which grouping all the pile caps in entire B model and link it to the respective leaves so we don't have to create each selection set for each task we're linking all selection sets all elements for different zones and levels and everything and in this case by drag and dropping these we link the task to the to the to the B model elements and the system will automatically uh, redistribute it to respective uh, hierarchy levels. Of course, we can use the same method for automatical mapping according to the name. We can select the tasks and the elements, use the map option, and then the system automatically recognize the selection sets on the right side and uh, the tasks regarding to the name. And then we can additionally or we have to additionally tell the system which are the higher levels of the uh, schedule segregation from the top to the lowest one unlike to the previous presentation where we have to create or link all leaf tasks and then tell the system to distribute everything to the top in this case system w works um, in a different way so you can select and link higher uh, level selection sets with the respective tasks in this case building stories from already provided segregation from the B model and then the system links and redistributes these until the lowest leaf, leaf task we linked these also according to the names then uh, we can use the same method for the next hierarchy levels uh, the next one are the phases so we can use the phases I'm gonna find the phases and then link select all the phases on the right side and use the option map to automatically link the maps selection sets with the tasks the next one is the next hierarchy level in this in this case work types so we can select different work types of uh, selection sets and using the option map system recognize the name distributes these to respective uh, selection uh, to respective tasks and then the last one is buildings itself so we can link building 1 and building 2 and that's it so if we hit ok the system will automatically redistribute all these elements to the lowest level of hierarchy regarding to the schedule it shows you that the system uh, creates links with the respective elements and when you hit ok you see that everything is uh, let's say updated the elements are related or linked to respective tasks of the schedule and now we can see how this looks like in the schedule animation schedule animation update the animation and check how this uh, schedule looks like of course in order to see it we have to switch the view into the schedule view and here if all the elements are visible we can see the schedule animation and of course now we see some of the uh, tasks or some of the elements supposed to be demolition or excavation of course we can just select these two elements which are supposed to be disappearing in, the, in this time go to the schedule editor and using the option find tasks with the elements the system find the tasks which are related to this uh, to these three to to be model elements and then we can change 
the type of this task. So we can go to the uh, settings and switch instead of automatic, change it to the demolition and hit OK. And of course, within the settings, we can change how the colors of this schedule animation will be presented. So if we linked all the elements in the imported schedule, we can change this coloring system into the link rules. So it's gonna automatically specify the colors for each task. And if I update my schedule again and go to the schedule animation, then you'll be able to see how the schedule animation looks now. So now we have these elements at the beginning and then disappearing because this is the excavation or preparing the, uh, the earthworks. And of course, if you have some elements which are supposed to be visible every time, and I can go to my 3D view and for example, existing ground and these existing B-model elements are supposed to be visible all the time, we can go again to the schedule view while these elements are still selected these elements are still selected, go to the schedule view, right click here and use option neutral schedule elements, add selected. So now these elements are automatically visible from the start. And then if we play the schedule, it looks like this. And of course, if we have some animation, we can use the animation or we can create new animation to, uh, change the camera rotation around the around the schedule during the execution. So I'm going to create new keyframe right here. And at the end, the keyframe can be here. Hit OK. And this is your for the simulation automatically linked to the B model. We didn't create all specific selection sets for each uh, leaf of your activities. The system done that automatically by um, segregating specific levels of your uh, schedule and hierarchy of the schedule. And of course, I'm going to go back to my schedule. Uh, currently, a lot of users ask how we can see the planned schedule and the uh, actual schedule. Is there a view, uh, is there a comparing window where we can see uh, these two animation at the same time? Currently, we do not have that option, but very, very soon we're gonna, uh, we're gonna um, develop that, that option as well. So you'll be able to see two parallel window where you can see the planned and actual schedule at the same time currently the option is to create or duplicate your schedule and create and export different animation of your uh, schedule. Of course, within the animation, schedule animation, there's a lot of different options for presenting your animation. So this is where you're specifying duration, frame rate, uh, the start end date, and how uh, often the schedule or actually the elements will be refreshed. So you can see all elements constructing on hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly base. So if you want to check your schedule animation on a weekly base and provide some look ahead plans, we can switch it to the weekly. And of course, within the different uh, settings and for the visibility options, we can switch it to last task color. So each task will be presented in the color or each element will be colorized um, by the task of the previous uh, activity. And then it's gonna be colorized with a new. This is really important if you have a lot of uh, different activities linked to the same B model elements. So this is the way how you can actually see the weekly presentation. So whenever we hit move to next, 
we see the weekly change. And here within the, the calendar, you see how the calendar is switching for a seven day. If we change this to the monthly, then every time when we do this, it's one month look ahead, two months look ahead, three months, four, and so on. And of course, we can bring it back to the daily. And there are also the options to export this kind of uh, videos. So let me just switch it to the daily. Okay. And all these animations can be exported using the export button into the set of images or into video using the respective codec that, that you have. And all these um, legends can also be adjusted using the schedule legend settings. So right here, you can choose what you want to see and the way how you want to see it. Right here. So you can change, also you can switch the position of these windows as well. And these are all basic options which are covered in the manuals. So I'm not gonna repeat it now because I want to show you if you go to the schedule editor and now you remember that I edited and uh, changed the um, duration of specific tasks. I can also do the similar thing for a, for a few tasks more. I can change duration into, let's say, uh, 40 hours a week, hit OK, and then everything is automatically changed, and I can export this into MS Project again. And when the export is finished, I'm gonna open the same schedule in the MS project. In the meantime, while I'm opening it, I'm gonna try to import the original schedule once again. This is the uh, export window, which is successfully exported. I'm gonna import or create new schedule with the, with the imported original one before we edit it. from MS project, sorry. So now we have two different schedule. This one is edited and this one is original. I'm gonna import the original one once again so we can compare it. So this is the original one. Finish and okay. So if we expand it, everything is scale to fit everything is here and we can choose option to compare it with the uh, uh, new from ms project edited and now all these tasks are presented and we can check the differences between these tasks and of course i'm gonna show you how this edited schedule which is linked to the B-model elements, is exported into MS Project. I'm opening it currently on my second screen. Let me just do that. So this is the one. And now we see uh, it's the same. And of course, if we see this 50 working hours, because we edited 
the site preparation and also we edited some of these uh, tasks as well into the uh, 50 I think hours and of course we can do some additional changing of the, of the schedule right here in the MS project as well so we can change duration for some of these additional tasks we can even create some new tasks of course i'm going to create a new task hmm. Um, this is the one and I'm going to export this schedule again and show you how to update existing schedule. So now I'm going to export this. So everything is related and you're not going to lose any information so you can continue with your workflow. So this is the one. updated so this is the one and we can use the option import from ms project once again choose this one open hit ok next and now the system actually tells you it's going to create new task. This is the one that we created in the MS project. New task is going to be created and some of the tasks will be updated. And that's it. So you see automatically duration and the entire schedule is changed. And at the end, probably we're going to get this new task, which is created somewhere. Uh, I'm not really sure where we created this one. So we can try to expand it. Or we can use the filter to find this new one. So this is the new task. And of course, sometimes our, our um, users asks us what uh, how this uh, schedule segregation looks like well ex actually unlike the ms project or primavera where you have this statical uh, let's say segregation uh, the segregation or the the way how the tasks are presented in the schedule are related on their uh, start and finish date so wherever you change your start and finish date for each task it's going to be automatically uh, repositioned according to that. So all the tasks are starting from the first one and uh, showing you uh, hierarchically all these uh, activities and the tasks based on start and finish date. So if I move or shift this site preparation, for example, or let's like this, because it's the first one everything is moved but if i shift something else depending on the relations you're going to see how it's going to be uh, shifted automatically so you see it's automatically shifted uh, and of course when we updated the schedule we can just do the update and the simulation for the simulation will be also automatically updated so we can play it again so i think we covered the basics uh, for this linking the elements with uh, with the schedule imported from the uh, primavera or ms project and how you can import and update your schedules uh, even if they're edited in the originally uh, used uh, scheduling tools. Let me just check your questions if you have some questions to 
to respond before the end of today's session. So we have the uh, how to check plan versus actual in single screen. As I've explained, uh, very soon we're going to create that ability as well. We're going to present that feature. So you'll be able to see two screens presenting these two simulations. Currently, you have to export the video of the original schedule and then export the video of the planned or actual schedule and then compare these two videos. How to comparison baseline and actual right here using the option compare with, you can choose to compare the original or the baseline with the, with the new schedule. And here you can see all these differences between the schedules. Uh, how to assign left to right object movement. I'm not really sure what do you mean, uh, left to right object. Can you automatically relate any property of the task with the, with the error names of the model to get automatically related workflow? Currently, no. Uh, you can relate the uh, groups or selection sets of the elements names with the tasks, uh, with the task names. Of course, currently uh, we have the uh, options to, or actually very soon, I'm going to uh, present you some new features that we're going to present in the next releases of the Bexel Manager is that uh, you'll be able to create selection sets from the custom breakdowns or quantity takeoff, something like that. So using the specific rules or the properties for creating custom breakdowns will be also used to create selection sets. And then that kinds of selection sets, which are used and created based on specific properties can be used to uh, link your selection sets or the groups with, with the tasks. Uh, property called, called area. Uh, as I've explained, currently you cannot use the property to link task with the property. Is resource uh, are, uh, are the cost editor? As I've explained yesterday, if you, if, you was, uh, if you were with us, within the cost editor, you can specify the cost items and uh, for each cost item, you can specify resources and then if you do that for entire project, you can use all these resources to create your cost versions. And once you uh, link these cost versions, if I double click on any of these uh, cost items, you see the uh, resources used for this specific uh, cost item. And all these resources are related to the B model. And then if you link your B model to your uh, cost version, even though it's imported from the MS project or Primavera, I can show you the column, which actually shows you the cost imported. So this is the cost estimate from the schedule, I think. And here, within the total cost, we can relate this schedule with specific cost version. And then if you have this cost version right here, you can compare these two cost estimation, but you have to re be really caref careful because depending on, on the elements which are included, in the specific cost version, um, the total cost can different can be different and uh, can change because some of the elements which are estimated in the cost version are not related in your in your uh, schedule tasks. Um, can you explain and show the concept of li line of balance in the project? Yes, uh, in this project, we already uh, linked the B model elements. So we can go to the line of balance and we can see the uh, 
let me just go back to the originally created schedule. which is related to the uh, task elements. And here, we can see the line of balance, which, which actually shows you the uh, tasks and the activities with their respective names, where this specific task is executed in your building and these uh, what is the duration of this um, task or the activity in this case, because we imported the schedule from the MS project at this and this schedule doesn't have the um, activities or the resources. We're just seeing the tasks. And actually uh, here where you can, this is the way where you can see if your uh, activities and resources, if you have them, are optimized and uh, uh, organized in the most efficient way. So in this case, you see that some of the activities are actually uh, executing at the same time where some other activities executing. And then you have to check if these are using the same resources or not. In this case as well, we see some of the tasks are executed at the same time. And of course, because this schedule is created in the MS project, it's not really optimized. And uh, um, also you can change all these tasks and duration and relations right here in the uh, line of balance as well. And automatically it's gonna be changed uh, and updated in the Gantt and logic because these are just different views of the same schedule. So this is different view of the same thing. And if I select any of these tasks, I can find this task within the uh, Gantt chart, for example. So this is the one. And we can find it in the line of balance as well. So we can find this in the line of balance. And uh, this is the way where you can see your tasks, activities and respective resources. If you had them currently, we didn't because we imported the schedule from MS project, but here you can optimize your activities and resources based on specific uh, zones of the building and stories of the building where specific activity is supposed to be executed. Because if you're just looking at the Gantt chart, you're not able to see if specific activity at the same time uh, actually takes the same resources uh, which are supposed to be um, reserved for some other level or similar similar things and this is let's say more advanced scheduling options uh, for the next week when when i'm going to explain you how to entirely create the schedule using the bexel manager and uh, using resources and the task uh, task uh, and the actually cost items defined in the uh, schedules in the sorry in the cost uh, cost versions how to visual, visualize actual progress was, well, as I've explained, you can choose from the list of schedules and then depending on the currently choose schedule within the cost, uh, within the schedule animations, you'll be able to see that, that, uh, that, that version of your simulation. And of course, if you have a planned and actual, you can always export two different videos and compare these videos. Also the progress and how to track the progress and how to input the progress in the schedule. Uh, it's something that we're gonna cover uh, also next week. So on, um, I think Tuesday, 
we, we're going to present you how to create the schedule in the Bexel Manager. And uh, on Wednesday, I'm going to show you how to input the progress and how to track your progress in the Bexel Manager and how to create different task reports in the Bexel Manager as well uh, when these schedule are related to the cost and uh, and uh, and resources so in that case we'll be able to see uh, the uh, task reports so if it's related to the cost let me just show you if currently this is the cost from the cost version and of course this one this column here is from the imported information from the MS project. And you can use the option for the task report to check the cost and the uh, resources if available and material, labor and so on. Even though it's just imported from the MS project, we linked it to the cost estimation, to the cost version, and of course, you'll you'll able to see the price. How to check critical path? Well, uh, as I've explained, you can see all your tasks, and each task, which is uh, in a critical path, is colored in in red. So choosing the option show critical path, the system shows you tasks on a critical path colored in red. And of course, within the schedule animation, we can go to the schedule animation as well. And within the options, we can colorize the elements which are uh, on the critical path. So we can colorize these elements on a, on a with a red color, for example. So you see these tasks are on a critical path because I've shifted these activities manually right here for a presentation purposes. Um, can you view the links logic in a flow line? Uh, yes, in the in the line of balance, actually. If you pop this out for each in this task, you're able to see the the uh, links when is the when it starts, when it ends. and the constraint. Uh, I think these are I think these are the questions for today. If no more questions, thank you very much for attendance, uh, and uh, see you next week with uh, more advanced scheduling features and uh, presenting the ways to automatically create the schedule in the Bexel Manager. Bye bye.